Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to talk about applying objects to your path. So in the first part of this tutorial, the getting started with paths, we talked about, uh, you know, basically how to create a path and uh, create this sort of animation here. We have this creepy looking UFO just circling around this house here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about the various types of objects that you can uh, attach to paths, such as props, characters, particle effects, cameras, and yes, even lights on there as well. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to talk about attaching a camera. We're going to have like sort of a follow camera for our, uh, our UFO here, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make our mothership here. I'm going to make it invisible just by uh, clicking right here. And I'm going to create a camera. So go over here to create and create camera. And now we have a camera. Let's just call it, uh, double click over here and call it UFO follow. Okay. And we can just switch back to our preview camera here and uh, zoom out a little bit to see the actual physical camera itself. Uh, we can press the W hotkey to move that around uh, wherever we want. And if we want to see exactly what the camera is seeing, we can press the F8 hotkey. And that will open up our mini viewport right here. And we can you know place that wherever we like, maybe somewhere like this. Let's just make it a little bit bigger. Just like that. Okay, good enough. And I'm just going to place it kind of down here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attach this camera to the path. All right, so the easiest way to do that, you can go uh, select the camera and closer to the bottom, you will have an option to pick a path. Okay, in the path or P section, you can use the P hotkey to get there. Just pick path, make sure you're at frame one and pick the place on the path right there. Switch our camera over to UFO follow. And you can see it's really not looking at anything right now. Um, we're going to fix that in just a moment. Uh, but first we need to create the camera animation itself. So I'm going to go to the last frame of my project. We can click and drag in our uh, right here in our timeline there and then we can just go to path position and set that at 100. Okay over here on the right you can see it creates that linear uh, pattern of uh, dashes there which indicates the path of our that our camera is taking there. And then what we can do after that is we can go back to frame one here and we can move our camera. So we can press the W hotkey and we can sort of offset the camera from the original path just like this. Okay, since it's going to be following the UFO, we want it to be maybe a little bit to the side and a little bit up. Okay, so we don't need to create another path. We can actually just move the camera and you can see it automatically saves that animation, uh, this path animation right there. Okay, so let's go make our mothership visible right now. And uh, then with our camera selected right down here, Let's have the camera look at the UFO. Okay, so the easiest way to do that, we have this look at feature over here. Pick target and pick the UFO. All right, could be a little bit too far away if we want to be, uh, or a little bit too close. If we want to be further away, we can just go like this or put it whatever position we want. And I think that one should be decent right there, maybe a little bit to the side as well. And then if we play back, let's see the camera will just follow that UFO the entire way. Pretty cool cinematic right there. Okay, so that's how you can use the path and then, you know, move your prop uh, to create a separate sort of uh, animation uh, area. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and close that down. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have our uh, character run along the path as well. In this one, we're going to explore the uh, basically putting the path on the terrain. Okay, so if you have a path like this, it's kind of up in the sky and everything like that. Let's just make our camera invisible for now. We don't need to see that. All right, um, I'm going to bring in a character. We're going to go to our content manager and to avatars up here, actors rather, and character. And we're going to bring in Curve Dude, Curve Man. All right, you can purchase this. Uh, you get Curve Man with the uh, Curve Editor uh, plugin in the content store there. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and have Curve Man run along a path here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this path, uh, the scene manager over here, select Mr. Curvy. And we're just going to create, I'm going to hold the control key and I'm going to click and drag to create a, another copy of that path. Okay. So we can call this, uh, you know, curve man path. Okay. And let's move over so we can kind of see that. All right. There we go. And what I want to do is with that curve man path selected, if we go up to the very top, we have the option to project it to the terrain. Okay. So if you, you know, instead of uh, like before we had to manipulate individual parts to uh, bring them all down to the ground plane or whatever, what we can do now is we can just take that one path and project to terrain. Okay. And you can see it goes like this and we have that nice loop 
around the house. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to place Curve Man slightly ahead of the UFO. So the UFO is going to be basically chasing him around his own house. Okay, <laughs> so I'm going to select Curve Man here. And uh, at the bottom here, we'll go ahead and uh, pick a path. And I'll just pick a random point on this path here. Uh, maybe this point right here. Okay, now the path position is currently at uh, 9.1. You can set this to whatever you want. Okay, just make sure you're at frame 1. Uh, we're at, you know, 9.1 will be fine. And then at the end of our project, so we're going to, you know, run through the entire thing. At the end of the project, you want to remember that, and you want to put 109.1, okay, 109.1, just like that. And it'll create that uh, path animation. And what's going to happen now is you'll have the UFO chasing him, and he's kind of like levitating and <laughs> moving sideways like this, which isn't very realistic. But we're going to be uh, applying uh, an animation to him momentarily. The first thing we want to do before we do that, though, is we want to make sure he's running around the path in the right direction. Okay, so right now, as you can see, he's floating to the side just like this. We want to make sure that he is facing the direction he's supposed to be facing. And the way you can do that is by selecting Follow Path. And then following the, generally it's a negative Y axis that leads you along the uh, path like this. You may have to experiment with different props and characters, but the negative Y axis should do the trick. And you can go like this, and then you'll see Curve Man will just kind of, now he'll float like he's riding a Segway or something along the uh, along the path right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply an animation to him just to make, make, make him look like he's running there. So I'm going to go to our Content Manager, to our uh, Motion tab up here, and into uh, Motion. And there is a uh, Dwarf uh, Motion Run that I want, that I find is very appropriate for Mr. Curve. This Dwarf Run right here. Okay, so we'll have uh, one frame of running just like that, and we need to make sure that the rest of it goes throughout the timeline as well. So I'm going to press F3 to go into our timeline, and with Curve Man's motion track open, all right, this motion track, very important, you'll find the clip right here. Let's just hold Alt and scroll our mouse button to zoom out. Make sure that you have the loop toggled on over here, and click and drag that clip to the end of the project. And what we're going to have is Curve Man running around away from the uh, UFO. Run, Forrest, run. Okay, there you go. Okay, and uh, you'll notice as well here that there's a little part closer to the end where Curve Man will kind of have a little bit of a loop de doop doop doo thing here, okay? Uh, whatever that is. And uh, what we need to do here is we need to actually smooth out this uh, curve right here. So there's a little, when we pr projected it to the train, it created this little sort of weird kink in our path. So what we need to do is let's go back to uh, frame one. Let's just make our uh, curve man, or rather the uh, prop here, the mothership invisible. Okay, and I'm going to select that curve man path and edit point right here. I'm going to choose this point, right click it, and then select smooth, and it'll smooth it out. You can see those uh, Bezier curve handles there. Uh, return. And if we want to unify them, we can do so again. Right click, unify tangents, and then we can, uh, you know, place it to, uh, you know, whatever tangent we want or whatever kind of curve we want. All right, just leave it like that. And uh, then if we uh, play back, we just need to make sure out of edit uh, point there, uh, make our uh, receive curve man does no longer do a little loop de doop. He just kind of smoothly runs along right there. Okay, pretty cool stuff. We can now uh, reactivate or make our mothership uh, UFO visible one more time. And let's add a little particle effect onto uh, Curve Man as well. So if we uh, go up to our content manager one more time, to our uh, media tab, or rather not media, the uh, props tab up here, or set tab, we have particle uh, folder. And if we get to the particle folder, I'm going to use this Popcorn FX Library 40 uh, effect here. This is available for separate purchase from the content store, uh, just so you're aware. Uh, we have uh, Weapon Explosive Magic VFX. There's one in nature that's called Car Dust. Okay, not really supposed to be used for curve man running, but we can work with it. Okay, so let's just go ahead and bring this into our scene. It'll appear as a little dummy. And what we want to do at the first frame, right-click. We can also right-click again to assign a path. Go to path and pick path. And let's just pick that same point, okay, right here. And you'll see that uh, at the bottom, path position is currently at 8.7. We could probably put a little bit 
further down, like maybe uh, 8.0 or something like that. And this will be a little bit further behind curve man. And then at the end of our project, the last frame, we can go here to end. Then we want it to be, uh, again, 108.0. Okay, there we go. And what's going to happen now is if we have a uh, curve man running, there'll be the uh, trail of uh, smoke behind him. Uh, he's just really booting it, running really fast there. Okay. Uh, so that's just a quick example of how you can attach the, uh, a particle effect to the uh, path as well. Okay, last but not least, let's talk about attaching a light to a path. And for this one, we're going to use a path template. So there's a number of different path templates that you can find as well in the uh, set tab up here. If we go to uh, motion path, there's a motion path folder. And you'll see a bunch of uh, wacky looking paths right here. I'm just going to use a simple circle one. I'll just go ahead and double click it, add it to my scene. And you can see it'll just place it right in the middle. If I press the R hotkey to scale, we can make that uh, larger and more spread out. And uh, if we just press the W hotkey, we can bring it upwards like this. We're just going to have it basically shine on uh, the curve man as he's running around. Okay. Now the types of light that you can attach to uh, paths are spotlights and point lights, as well as spot cast shadow casters and point shadow casters. The other lights cannot be attached to paths, so just keep that in mind, okay? So we're going to create, we're just going to create a light, and then there was light, create a spotlight. And we're going to basically uh, place that spotlight. Oops, we actually moved our path at the last frame here, so you can see our path will expand like this. If you make a mistake like that, all you got to do is just select your path, uh, circle path, we'll just rename it, we'll call it light path. Okay, just keep things uh, organized there. Just basically take your transform keyframe at the very end, and you can click and drag it all the way to the beginning, and there you go. So it stays that way at the very beginning. Okay, let's take the spotlight now, and we're going to have the spotlight look at uh, Curve Man as he's running around there, okay? So go ahead and pick target, pick curve man. All right, ended up choosing his waist. Okay, and we're also going to attach the uh, spotlight to a path. Again, so we can pick path or you can right click it, select path, pick path. Let's just pick maybe this point right here. Okay, and if you want, you can modify the parameters of the spotlight. You can have more shadow darkness. If you pay, uh, take a closer look at the shadow beneath curve man, you'll see the darkness of the shadow. You can increase or decrease that however you'd like. I like to have dark shadows myself. You can increase the intensity to like three or maybe two. Might be a little bit better just to keep things in uh, perspective there. Uh, your range intensity, you can increase that or decrease that. Okay, we'll just leave it right there. The angle of the spotlight beam, we can place however we want. Okay, again this is all just lighting stuff that we can cover in other tutorials. But the, pro, uh, the uh, thing I want to do uh, talk about here is making that light follow along the path, okay? So all we got to do is uh, the light is at this point, okay? So if we have the light selected, spotlight selected, at the very bottom, you can see it's at path position 80.1, okay? If we go to our uh, last frame here, we can just make it at 180.1. .1. All right, and it'll create, again, that loop-de-loop -loop around the path. Okay, if we uh, play back now, there you go. The light will just follow him around and uh, as he tries in vain to escape the uh, towering UFO behind him. All right, so that's really about all I wanted to show you guys in this tutorial. Just some various examples of uh, how you can use paths and you can, of course, uh, you know, make your paths invisible. We can make the, uh, the light invisible, uh, spotlight invisible there and uh, all that stuff, and we can, you know, press F8 to load in our uh, mini viewport here with the other camera perspective. We'll just put it to the side here or something, and then uh, play back so we get uh, the view of the entire thing. And again, the lights aren't lighting up in the uh, viewport because the viewport is uh, simple shading. It's not the uh, global illumination shading and stuff that we have in the main viewport there. All right, so that's, again, really about all I want to show you guys. So uh, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you learned a lot here, and uh, hopefully no UFOs will be abducting any of you in the near future. Uh, so make sure you check out our forums as well at forum.reillusion.com, and I hope to see you in the next video.